In this tutorial, we will learn everything about the Flex Layout in CSS. The Flex Layout is one of the most powerful tools in modern web design. It allows you to create flexible layouts easily. But what exactly is the Flex Layout? The Flex Layout is also known as Flexible Box Layout or simply Flexbox. Now when I say Flex, I don't mean flexing muscles. It's about flexibility. The Flex Layout makes your layouts flexible and adaptable to different screen sizes. You can use it to align elements in rows and dynamically fill additional space. And you can also use Flexbox to align your elements in columns. So let me give you some reasons why you should use Flex Layout in CSS. First, it allows you to create flexible layouts. Second, you can use it to make all elements the same width. You can vertically center elements and create columns which have the same height. But there is a lot more to learn about the Flex Layout, so let's jump into the code and learn the details. But before we start, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so we can help even more people learning to code. Ok, so let's get started. I have prepared a simple HTML page for you, which only contains three different boxes. And now we want to create our first Flex Layout. To make an HTML element flex, we have to give it the display flex property. Have a look at the browser and you will notice that the three boxes are appearing in the same row. That's because the default flex direction is row. You can change the flex direction by using the flex direction property. Let's set it to column. Check out the browser and you will notice that all boxes will be displayed in a single column. Now I want to show you how we can make a box grow to fill up additional space. To make flex items grow, we have to use the flex grow property. Let's set it to one for box two and have a look at the browser again. And as you can see, box two grows to fill up the additional space of the row. Next, let's set the flex grow property of box three to one as well. Now both box two and box three will grow by the same amount of space. Now if we change flex grow of box 3 to 2, box 3 will take up more of the additional space. To be exact, it will take 2 times more of the additional space than box 2. Because the value of flex grow is relative to other flex items. Similar to flex grow, we can use flex shrink to let items shrink and give some additional space to other flex items. The flex basis property sets the initial size of a flex item before the additional space is distributed according to the flex grow and flex shrink properties. What if we want to have some spacing between the boxes? Of course we could just set some good old margin, but Flexbox has some special property for that. I'm talking about the gap property. But before we can see the gap property in action, let's remove the margin and the padding from the box and set a width and height of 150 pixels. And as you can see, there's no space between the boxes now. So we are going to set a gap of 20 pixels to the container class. And as you can see in the browser, there will be some space between the boxes. Keep in mind that the gap property only works for flex items. Now we will learn how to align flex items. First we will have a look how to center content within a box. So let's make the boxes flex containers as well by setting the display property to flex. And for centering the content within the boxes, we have to set the justify content property to center. Justify content aligns items along the flex direction. Remember, the default flex direction is row, so it aligns the content horizontally. And similar to the justify content property, the align items property is used to align items in the opposite flex direction. And because here the flex direction is row, it aligns the items vertically. I have changed the height of the boxes to different values, so we can have a look at some other cool features of Flexbox for aligning items. For example, we could set align items to baseline to display the content of all three boxes in the same line, even though they have different heights. And if we set align items to flex start, the boxes will be aligned at the top and flex end will align the items to the bottom of the container. And to stretch the items to take up the full height, we can set align items to stretch. Let's set the height of the container to 500 pixels and remove the individual height properties from each single box. And now we can see in the browser that all three boxes are stretched to the height of the container. If we change the height of the container to 200 or 100 pixels, the boxes will stretch accordingly. 
Okay, back to the boxes with different heights again. And I also set the flex basis of the three boxes to 50 pixels. Let's set the justify content property to space between to align the boxes taking up the full width and distribute the additional space of the row evenly between the boxes. And space around can be used to distribute the additional space around the boxes. If you compare the result to space between, there will be also some spacing to the left and to the right. We can also have elements wrapped to the next row if they are larger than the current row. To achieve that, we have to use the flex wrap property. When you set flex wrap to wrap, the items will wrap to the next row. When you set it to wrap reverse, the items will be wrapped too, but in reverse order. Have a look at the browser to understand what I mean. When we resize the browser window, the boxes will wrap to a new row as soon as there isn't enough space in the current row. Do you remember how we used justify content and align items for aligning flex items within a flex container? Of course you do. Similar to that, you can also align flex items individually by using the align self property. And what if we want to take full control over the order of our boxes? We can do that easily by using the order property. Let's change the order of the boxes a little bit by setting the order property for each of the boxes. Keep in mind that the lowest order is 0 and not 1. And now have a look at the browser. Box 3 is the second box now and box 2 the fourth. Okay, the last thing we are going to learn in this video is something which could potentially save you some time when creating flex layouts with CSS. You can combine flex grow, flex shrink and flex spaces in a single property which is just flex. The flex shorthand property can have up to three different values. If it just has a single value and this value is numeric, like 2, it defines flex grow. And if the single value of the flex property has a unit, like pixels, it defines the flex basis. And if it has three values, the first one is flex grow, the second one flex shrink, and the third one flex basis. Okay, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. To support my work, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. And of course, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I will help you out. So happy learning and see you next time.